Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Space Base. This was sent to me by AEG and is designed by John D. Clare. Space Base is a dice game where players draft ships into their space base. Every turn, no matter whose turn, players harvest rewards from their space base, whether those rewards are an increase in your baseline income, credits for the next turn, influence, or some other powerful effect that will lead you to victory. Space Base has you involved and engaged on every player's turn, from the first roll of the dice to the last. Let me show you how to play. So in Space Space, you are racing to win 40 victory points. On your turn, you will roll two six-sided die, and then all players will gain rewards from their cards, either for each individual die or for the sum of the dice. Um, and even if it's not your turn, you can still gain rewards for certain cards on your board. Um, so let's go through how this sort of system works. So on your turn, you roll your dice. Now, I have a two and a three. Now, in this case, I could either trigger, uh, if you look at these blue, blue um, spaces are ones that trigger on your turn when you're the active player. Um, so I would look here, uh, two and three, they each get one credit if I chose them as individual dice, or I could add them together and get just one credit for the five. Now, obviously I want more credits, so two and a three, I would get two credits. Everybody else, if they have ships, like for example, this r the red spaces, um, are ones that trigger on other people's turns. At the start of the game, you do get a random card from the level one deck, uh, and you replace one of your spaces. So whenever you replace a ship, you put the new card down, and then you tuck the old card underneath the board like this. So if anybody else ever rolls a four on their turn, you could score a credit. So you're always paying attention to other people's rolls. After you've done your roll and collect your resources, then you can buy a card or choose not to. Um, so with two credits, if we look up here, um, I could buy this ship right here. If I did, I would put it into the new slot. So this tells you which slot it goes into, eight. This tells you the reward you get. This is how many credits it was. So take the eight card, bam, and tuck it underneath. Now, this means every time I roll an eight on my turn, I get two victory points. Uh, if we look at uh, these sort of globe icons, whenever you roll one of these, you get income boosts. And income, what that does is no matter what, even when, let's say my income was three. Um, even if I buy, uh, like spend all my credits, like five credits, my minimum uh, income is always going to be three. So it doesn't go down to zero. It just goes to three. So the higher income you have, the more of a base amount of credits you'll have to spend each turn. What's also important to note is that when you buy a card, let's say I had 11 credits uh, and I spent six credits. Uh, you don't go down to five. Whenever you buy a card, you always go down to your income. And this blue cube is a victory point marker. So as you're going up, you're trying to get more and more points because the race is to 40. If any cards are purchased, you replace them. And as you can see, there are many different cards you can buy. Not only are there ship cards in the one, two, and three levels, there are also colony cards over here. If you buy a colony card, you get a one-time bonus of victory points, but then um, that space can no longer be triggered. So let's say I spent nine or 12 credits to get this ship. That means I go over here, I go to my two space. Now I get four points, but now two can never be triggered on my turn. However, I can still trigger bonuses on other people's turns. So just a reminder of how the other people's turns work. Let's say uh, somebody rolls an eight. Uh, since I have a red uh, space on my eight column, uh, that means I can get two credits on, uh, even though it's not my turn. Now, when a player reaches at least 40 victory points, it triggers the end of the game, and everyone it just, you just finish the current round, so everybody has the same number of turns. Uh, most points is the winner. If there's a tie, you play another full round until somebody is definitely the winner. Now, a lot of the cards here are pretty straightforward, but let's look at some of the more complicated ones. Some cards just have straight up text on them. Like here's a very powerful late game card. Um, if it's in the nine slot, it basically if on your turn you roll a nine, you get to claim one level two card and one level one card for free. So you would get just two more ships you get to put onto your board. There are also arrow cards like this one. So if I slipped this into the 10 slot, 
Now this means whenever I roll a 10 on my turn, I can either choose this reward or this reward. Um, so these are useful for cutting, like increasing the odds of you getting certain spaces triggered. And of course, likewise for both of these cards. Uh, first off, if you, when you, whenever you get new uh, red cards, you stack them actually. So this one would give you three points, three credits, and you could choose. And likewise, you can also, ah, here's charging. So how charging works is, um, you see there's a space for a cube here. So let's say I triggered on another person's turn a charge. You put one of these cubes on here. That means on one on your turn, you can claim one level two card. You spend the charge and you get to use that ability. Let's get into some of the more complicated charge cards. So a card like this, if you charge it on your turn, all opponents lose four victory points, buy one or two cards. Because normally you can only buy one card per turn. Uh, but this lets you buy some extra cards. Uh, whenever you charge, you can use it any time during your turn. The upside down one is uh, on a, if you charge on somebody else's turn, on your turn you can make people lose three points and buy a card. Green abilities can be used during any turn. So this one, whenever if you charge it on your turn, meaning that's the, what the blue means, then at any time, place one charge anywhere. Then move one of your charges to another open charge spot. This is useful for helping charge your other spaces. Going through some other cards here. Uh, this one has two separate charges, meaning you can use it more than once. Uh, so it says before rolling, set one of your die instead of rolling it, and you get a credit. So yeah, if you um, use charge that up, you can use that ability. This one means uh, for a roll, if you have, if you choose your dice as a sum, uh, you can move it uh, one space over. So for so if I had this ability charged already and I rolled an eight, I could decide, you know what, I want to spend my charge and change it to a nine so I can trigger this powerful one. You also have cards like this, where you're filling it up with charges. If you fill this up all the way, depending on how many players you have, uh, you will get, you can swap your one and 12 sector cards, um, which is useful. If you wanna, let's say, have a rare 12 card that you wanna switch with your one and have it more po uh, likely to trigger. And then here's a card like this, where if you charge it up all the way, you win the game. You don't even have to worry about the victory points. Uh, it's a very ambitious card, but if you can set up your engine correctly, it is definitely doable. Uh, so yeah, there are other types of cards as well. I'm not gonna go through every single one, but there are a lot of different things you can do in this game. But yeah, at its core, it's very simple. Roll dice on your turn, you trigger your blue spaces. Uh, other people roll dice, you trigger your red spaces. Uh, you just stack up those points and get those credits, buy better cards and beef up your engine. Uh, and that's pretty much the game. So I have loved this game for a while now, and for me, it is the Machi Koro Killer. I absolutely love buying new ships and making up my tableau of possible dice rolls even juicier. And what I love about this game is, similarly to my Machi Koro, is every turn you want to pay attention because there's always more potential for getting free goodies. It's a game that's great for keeping everyone's attention the entire time. I really enjoy the income system where you're guaranteed a minimum amount of currency per turn. It's very satisfying improving that and getting that head start towards your next ship. Uh, a lot of the ship effects are very ingenious and clever. Uh, it can be fun kind of building almost your own Rube Goldberg machine of like, okay, if I if you roll this, it'll hit, the arrow will make it go to this, and then aha, I can charge this and move the charge to here, and you can do a lot of fun sort of plans that way. Uh, it's fun to engineer the best possible setup to charge and use abilities effectively to do other things. Of course, there's gonna be luck involved. It's a dice rolling game, and so that might bother some people, but for me, what I like about this game is it's essentially strategic gambling. It's light, but there's still a lot of stuff to think about for how to make your odds better. That's what this game is. It's just making your odds better for yourself and trying to get better prizes and using those prizes to become even more efficient. It's a really fun loop that's always engaging no matter whose turn it is, which can be rare in a board game, I will say. So I appreciate that it's very engaging throughout. Very satisfying to play. Really love playing this one out and I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a fantastic game.